Good, John. Patrick, I think that is. We're now being joined by a couple of student athletes from North Carolina Central, Dewan Graff and Patrick Cole. A couple of reminders before we start, we ask that you just silence your cell phones and there is no video recording allowed, but there is video distribution sites across the hall. Uh, also no flash photography, uh, but you can take pictures. And we just ask that you direct your question to a specific student athlete. You got a question, raise your hand, we'll bring the mic around and just identify yourself by name and affiliation. So we'll open the floor to the questions for uh, Patrick and Dewan. Right here in front. How you guys doing? Good. Uh, Jonas Pope with the Herald Sun in Durham. Uh, Pat and Dewan, now that it's finally here, you guys are here in Dayton. What's, what's going through your mind? What's your thought process? Now that you guys are actually here and seeing the floor and the game is less than 24 hours away. Um, it's just an honor to be here in Dayton, you know. It's just a blessing to be playing in the tournament again. And uh, we're just trying to get focused and get ready for the game tomorrow. Uh, for this being my first time and a, a lot of my teammates' first time, um, the experience, you know, from leaving school to getting on a plane to getting off the plane just was tremendous. Um, it just, you know, had me thinking about how there's a lot of, you know, student athletes out there that didn't get this opportunity through four years of their college experience and that I'm blessed to be one of them and my teammates are as well. Um, this experience has been great so far, but um, I try to reiterate to them guys that we're not here to just participate. Um, we're here to win a basketball game, and that starts tomorrow. So, you know, we're kind of getting focused and getting ready for a great opponent tomorrow in UC Davis. Back here. Yeah. Scott Marsh with CBS Radio. You, you mentioned UC Davis. Obviously, it's a quick turnaround. What do you know about the Aggies, and what are you looking forward to about matching up against them tomorrow night? Uh, we know they're a very aggressive team. You know, they like to get in the paint. They like to get fouls. Um, we just got to – we know how they play defense. We know they got to play the same kind of defense we used to play, pack line defense. Um, we just know we got to be prepared coming out. They're going to play hard. They're going to play aggressive. You know, it's a tournament game. Nobody wants to go home. So, we just got to play more aggressive and want to win it more. You want to? Oh, yeah. Sorry, oh, Patrick. Um, yeah, they – you know, we know that they're aggressive, you know. They kind of want to get in you defensively, pressure on the ball. Um, we know that at this time and point, no one wants to go home. <laughs> you don't want to stop playing basketball at this time. Uh, you want to kind of keep playing as long as you could. So we know they're going to come out with some fire, you know, a different kind of fire. Um, and we just, you know, want to stay on each other by having that same fire, um, not wanting to go home and want to continue to play in this tremendous tournament. When you guys, uh, after you clinched the regular season, you know, you beat them at home, you cut down the nets, and then, you know, we know what happened next, the next two games. You guys won the MIAC, cut down the nets, and been celebrating again. How do you make sure that team that was in Norfolk that dominated the conference tournament makes a way to date and, and not that same team that had to lay over against uh, Savannah State and Central to end the regular season? Patrick, can you take that first? Uh, just like I said, reiterating to the guys that what got us through, through um, Norfolk was defense. Um, Defense won us that, that championship and that we had to stay focused and locked in on the defensive end of the floor. Um, I said, we kind of lost focus in that and what has got us on a 13 game win streak was our defense. Um, we were holding teams under 60 um, to 50 points, shooting about 30% from the field. And we kind of got away from that playing Savannah and uh, North Carolina a &T. So we kind of just want to stay locked in mostly on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, like Pat said, we just know we got to focus on defense the most. Um, defense definitely wins championships, as you can see. Both teams won their conference tournament, so we know that both teams are pretty good defensively teams. So we really want to focus on our defense and just stay locked in and what we're doing in the game plan. Front left again. Were those two games and three games in Norfolk, was that the best ball you guys have played all season, in your opinions? Duan? Um, uh, I think it was probably the best defensive games we had all season. We just, I think we played good defense all year, but we just knew going into the conference tournament we were going to have to lock up and just give everybody our best shot on defense. Um, and that was about it, really. We just wanted to play good basketball and play as a team and win that conference. Patrick? Yeah, coach told us after we lost the NT, he said, look now, you lose again, that's it. Um, there won't be no more fighting for an NCAA tournament bid. Um, you will have a postseason berth, but it won't be, you know, 
the dreams that all you had since you were younger, you know, watching other teams play in the NCAA tournament. So we kind of went into no folk with a mindset of like, hey, we doing this for each other in the locker room, you know, for our fans, for everybody that believe in us. We need to start believing in ourselves. And, and you know, we kind of got away from that, but we're back to it. We know those two losses kind of hurt us a lot, you know, coming moving forward into this tournament. But I feel like we're ready and we will be ready tomorrow night. Back left. Dewan, does the experience from a couple of years ago help now? <laughs> Yeah, I think it plays a big part for me because uh, I can tell these guys what to expect and, you know, uh, how to handle certain situations, you know. And, um, just being prepared for everything that comes at you, you know, it all comes kind of fast and it's like a blur in these last couple of days. But I'm just trying to get my guys focused and ready to play on Wednesday. Right here in the front. No, I, I think I saw you tweet that you felt like you hadn't slept in a couple of days after you got back from Norfolk. That what you mean by it's all a blur? Everybody's yeah. patting me back and getting phone calls and everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of family members have been calling me. A lot of my friends have been calling me, trying to talk to everybody, just see how it's going. And, you know, they congratulated me for the, the win. But I try to tell them we still got more work to do and we still got a game Wednesday and then hopefully we have a game Friday. So, I mean, I really haven't slept that much in the last couple of days, but last night I got a, a little bit more sleep. Because of what happened against Savannah State and AIT, and I hate to keep bringing it up, was that a lesson you think you guys needed and you, you're going to learn from it being here after, after winning another championship? Um, any, anytime you lose, you got to look at it as a learning experience, um, especially losing when you know that you were supposed to win and that you had a chance to win. Um, there's some things we could have did differently, but – Hey man, hats off to those guys, you know, that, that beat us. You know, they came out more hungrier than us. And on any given night, this is basketball, you know. No matter what school anyone goes to, you can be beat. And, you know, we just went into the into the games with uh, the wrong mindset. We didn't go in, you know, the 13 win streak team. We went in there kind of, you know, sleeping on those guys, kind of just trying to get through the day, get through the game. And it, it hurt us. And we did learn from that. So we're going to move forward and not going to sleep on UC Davis as we're, you know, getting prepared for them. We know they won their conference tournament. So we're, we're going to be ready. Yeah, I just uh, think that everything happens for a reason, you know, and those two losses, we definitely learned a hard lesson from that. And Coach told us, like, going into those games, like, don't sleep on these guys. They're very good teams. They're dangerous teams. And, and we happened to sleep on them. We got two losses from that. But after that, I think we just learned our lesson. We had a lot hard lesson we had to learn. And we just started getting our focus back, went back to the fundamentals, basic principles that we've been doing all year. And then that kind of helped us in the conference tournament. So we wanted to use that momentum to come into the NCAA tournament today and tomorrow. Any more questions? All right. Patrick and Dewan, thank you. Good luck thank tomorrow. Uh, next scheduled press conference is at 1140. We'll be joined by the head coach of North Carolina Central, Lavelle Moten, at 1140.
All right, we're now joined by the head coach of the of North Carolina Central, Lavelle Moten. Lavelle, if you'd like, you can make an opening statement and we'll open the floor for questions. Um, good morning. Um, we're happy to be here. Um, we're proud to represent North Carolina Central um, in March Madness in the 2017 edition. And uh, I'll just take some questions from you guys. I know you have a couple, so I'll answer whatever you need to ask. Questions for Coach, here in the front left. Coach. So, Joe. Um, last time you guys went to San Antonio, I remember you saying, you, you know, this week you really didn't, couldn't enjoy it, like really take it in because of what had happened with your son a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, this time, I saw you on the floor taking pictures. Yeah. He's right there with you. Yeah. Just talk about the experience between this time and that time because you can kind of take it in and enjoy a little bit more and focus more on it. You know, last time it was really, um, you know, I, I can't even find the adjective to, to describe it. You know, on Saturday night you win a championship. On Sunday night you have championship selection Sunday. On Tuesday you're scheduled to leave, but on Monday you get news that your child is now in the hospital because he got second degree burns because he spilled coffee on himself. And I just remember going uh, to my wife and I called the chancellor and I said, you know, it was a weird situation because professionally I was at the height of my career but personally, I was at the lowest point. And I called my chancellor and I said, I'm not going. She was like, what's going on? And I told her about my son. And she said, if you don't want to go, we support you because family is always first around here. And I just, I just made the decision not to go. And, and my wife, she's out there as well. I saw the disappointment in her face and she grabbed my hand and she said, you teach those kids to be tough and resilient. So now it's your turn to actually walk the walk. Um, that you always talk. So she said, you go out there and try to win a game and me and VJ will stay here. And I've always felt guilty about that. In 2014, I, it's, this is really my first time because I don't even remember anything from that, that weekend. I don't remember no plays from the game. I don't remember anything. I just felt some guilt as a father saying, I'm coaching a basketball game. My son is in the hospital. Um, you know, as a husband, I felt like I underachieved because my wife, you know, she had supported me when I was a middle school basketball coach. So it was 20 people in, in the gymnasium. So now when you um, ascend to a certain level of, of March Madness, you would like to share that moment with her and I couldn't do that. So a lot of, in large part, I always wanted to get back here for a bit of a selfish reason, just to be able to bring them and have them experience. And I'm laying in the hotel last night and he just running around a thousand miles an hour. I can't get no sleep. And I'm like, man, why did I bring you out here? So. <laughs> So it's, it's back, man, but, you know, I, I have them here, and it's, it's really a blessing. Coach, Scott Marsh with CBS Radio. Um, you're used to this quick turnaround now, but just talk about what you've been able to do pr to prepare for UC Davis and what your thoughts are on the Aggies for tomorrow. You know, at this juncture, man, it's, it's really tough for the turnaround time, as you mentioned. Um, you know, we got back on Sunday night and then they announced and who we're going to play and where we're going to play. And then once they announce, you know it's a good team, but you just don't know who you're playing. And you got to ramble and scramble and find tape and make some phone calls to some friends that you trust in the business about them. Um, but then you have to actually see them for yourself. And it's almost like a spitting image of us on the defensive end. They're really good. Um, they're well disciplined, well coached. Um, and we're going to have to be on point. And they've won 22 games, and they finished second in the league and won their tournament. So, you know, at, at this junction of the season, we respect them, um, and we know they're coming in here to win a basketball game as well as us. Front left. I know you said you don't remember too much from the weekend in San Antonio, but you, you have been there, um, even if you don't remember it. But you have the experience of game planning and, and, and playing in front of the bigger crowds. How much have you talked to your team about that and that experience? And how much do you think it's going to make you a better coach this time because you have been there before and done it? Um, you know, I, I, I think what really makes them better is our non-conference schedule. That's why we try to play a challenging one because we, we've been to those venues. We've been in Ohio State. Um, we've been in Marshall. We've been in LSU. We've been in Missouri. We've been in the MEAC tournament. We had the pressure of maintaining a, a one-game lead for 11 games in the MEAC just to win the regular season. We had the pressure of um, dismissing all of that and having to uh, depend on just 72 hours for your season to continue. So 
I don't know if it makes me a better coach. The one thing I just tell them to try to make them better basketball players is everyone loves March Madness, but let's not get it twisted. I, I'm from humble beginnings. I know what pressure is. You know, pressure is walking outside of your home every single day, having to make a life or dis death decision to go back in. And pressure is your mother struggling to keep the lights on and having a hot meal on the table. That's pressure. This is sports and entertainment. So treat it as such and go out there and play extremely hard. Front left, you do have a couple guys who have NCAA tournament experience with uh, Duan mm -hmm. and, and Ryan Trapps, who've, who's been to two tournaments. Mm -hmm. How much of the guys have you seen in the last couple of days leaning on them or asking them questions, or how much of the information are they giving to the rest of the team about this whole experience? All they could give was the uh, police escorts and the planes, right? That's all they could give because uh, it's great that you mentioned that because neither one of those guys were prominent figures on that team. So, you know, it's kind of different with the roles that they've ascended to and the responsibilities they ascended to. They played on the teams, but they were more like the John Sallies of the Chicago Bulls, right? And, and they were just back there reaping the benefits of Scotty and Michael. So now they're Scotty and Michael. And um, they had a team meeting the other night, and uh, I was in for a minute, and then I heard them talk about what color socks we were in, and I walked straight out. I can't listen to that stuff. So, and you know, tell them what they were talking about afterwards, but I fully entrust that they'll bring a level of maturity and, and knowledge and wisdom and, and allow it to permeate down the line to our guys. <clears throat> Coach, it must make you feel pretty good, though, that you do have a veteran experience team, even if it's not tournament experience. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's how we try to recruit. You know, we changed our, our format of recruiting and, and um, we need some experience out here because everyone else is going to get one and done's. And, you know, when that experience meet those um, one and done's, we think that's kind of the great equalizer um, beyond the talent. So I think that's gotten out of, us out of a couple of venues and kept us in a couple of games and kept us from cracking during pivotal times um, is the experience uh, is, you know, ex a wise man once told me experience is the best teacher you'll ever have in life. And, you know, I definitely concur with that statement. Um, a lot of guys on your roster, uh, you know, they've got to play in their home state or go travel to their home state. This is Cal's first time at Central, playing against a team from California. Um, Cal's a pretty laid back guy, he seems, but have you seen a little extra pep in his step, a little bit more juice from him the last couple of days knowing he's playing against the California team? I, I haven't. I don't know what gets the boy going. I was like, I don't know what, a five hour energy drink. I don't know what it is. Um, he's just constantly laid back and he's a Cali kid. I think he was, the, you have different Cali kids, but I think he was the surfboard Cali kid type thing who loves to catch a wave and all that type stuff. So he's really laid back in his demeanor. Um, However, he's played with a high motor and high activity on both ends of the floor. Um, and that's going to be really needed against their front line because they're probably one of the most active groups um, that, that we've seen this year. Any further questions for Coach? Yeah, Arch. Yeah, this, this is kind of off the mark a little bit, but uh, didn't I was talking to you back there about it. When you was a kid, Weren't you going to be like a musician or a boy band or something like that? And did did you have some uh, some moves and could sing or no? That would have been a bad career move. It was a um, new addition. I'm from the. I was born in the same uh, housing project as New Edition. I don't know if you, any of you guys are familiar with them, but um, yeah, you know, it was just interesting to for us to all come from nothing, and they were five or six years older. And to see them eventually have the number one song in the world bypassing and knocking a guy by the name of Michael Jackson and beat it off the charts. You know, it was now in hindsight, it was it was bananas, but we didn't even know they had the number one song in the nation at that time because there was nothing to justify it. We didn't have cable TV. Uh, we didn't have Internet. We were kids, so we really didn't listen to the radio. And they couldn't convince us that they were superstars because we all lived in the project. So superstars don't live down here. So it was whatever. It wasn't until I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina that um, I realized the magnitude of who they were 
and all the girls in my elementary class were screaming about him. And I told the girls, hey, I know them. And they was like, yeah, right. So I, I knew I didn't have a chance then. So for them to have a movie and all that, they really inspired me. Any other questions for Coach Moten? All right. Lavelle, thank you. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Next scheduled start for press conferences 12:05 will be joined by